Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Family of God is your brother DJ Sam Brock right here on the Blaze Bible Study. And we're in preparation. We're in preparation. I'm in preparation for a 21-day fast, a 21-day of prayer and fasting. And I must admit, this is not my favorite time of the year. But I also have to say, and I have to testify this most po- that this is the most powerful time of the year as I've been a Christian, as I've been fasting and praying and praying and fasting for the first part of the year, the first month of the year, dedicating it all to the Lord Jesus Christ, giving it to God, finding ways to give more of myself and give more of who I am to the Lord because he created me um, to be this way. Listen, 21 days of prayer and fasting, it's just going to be a time of supernatural increase. I just sense it. I know it. Um, I already was challenged today um, with my thought process about fasting, my thought process about praying, and I know God has already prepared my heart. He has already done it, and I'm praying that he will also do it for you as well, the listener. 21 days of praying and fasting. We're going to go through some scriptures, but this is really like a preparation, an introduction to why I do this 21-day prayer and fasting every year. I think I've been doing it for close to 10 years now. And I've been serving the Lord for 18, 19 years now, I believe. And yeah, so December 12th made, I want to say, 18 years. Amen. Going on my 19th year, and that's all glory to God. If you had known me 20 years ago, you'd be like, there's no way this dude, this brother right here is going to be in church serving the Lord, doing what God says he was going to do. And it happened. That's why I'm like literally stuck, not stuck in a bad way of serving God and being a Christian. I just mean stuck by meaning that if God did that for me, I'm just knowing that he could do it for anybody. If he changed me. I know for sure he could change you. So the Blaze Bible Study, we're going to be here walking this thing through. I hope you really engage with me and with what's going on in the Blaze Bible Study and with the community of believers, the family of God here at soulwinnerswithaz.org because I'm believing that this 21 days prayer and fasting will accelerate all those dreams and all those prayers that you've prayed for your family, for yourself, for your finances, for your health, for your strength. For all those things that you thought that God forgot about, I'm praying that during this 21-day fast, before it's even done, that all those promises and all those things that God has spoken to your life will be accelerated, that you might get 20 and 30 years in, if you're that old, if you're as old as I am, 20 and 30 years of what the enemy tried to steal, that God will increase you and give it all back within this 21-day fast. That's how powerful this 21 day fast could be. And I'm believing it will be for me and I'm believing it will be for you. All you have to do is believe and trust God. Trust him at his word. Trust him for his word. Trust him for salvation. Trust him to change you. Trust him to increase you, to elevate you, to heal you. Trust him. Trust God and he will do it. Amen. So let's pray and forgive me. But really, I'm not asking for forgiveness for what I'm about to do. But it's going to be a little different than how I usually pray. Right now, I'm unctioned and I'm, I'm prompted to pray in a spirit, in a Holy Spirit God, a Holy Ghost prayer, okay? So if you hear your language, because when I pray, it sounds like different languages. And one time I had a dream, and in my dream, I was speaking in the different languages, and there was dogs in my kitchen, in a kitchen. I don't know if it was my kitchen or someone else's kitchen, but that that dialect and that language that I was speaking sounded like a different language. And for some reason, God directed me to this woman that I used to work with in, um, a while back. And she was from, I want to say, uh, either Yugoslavian or from those parts of the country, Russia, or from that area around there, right? And God told me to ask her what I was saying during the dream. So I knew a word that I kept on repeating in my dream. And I, when I spoke to the lady and I asked her, what does that mean? She said, how did you know that, first of all, that my language and that and my language, that what you just said means dog, means dogs. And like I said, my prayer 
uh, my excuse me, not my prayer, my dream had dogs in the kitchen. And when I repeated what that word was repeating over and over again in my dream said, she said, yeah, that means in my language, dogs. Wow. So uh, I believe she was from the Ukraine, but it was amazing. And that just confirmed to me that when God speaks through you different languages, they are different languages. So if you hear your language being spoken, please let me know what I'm saying. Amen. Because God said there will be an interpreter. Uh, when you speak in tongues and when you pray in the Holy Ghost. So let's start the prayer. I'm going to be praying in the Holy Ghost. You can join me if you're filled with Spirit of God, Holy Spirit God, and He prompts you to come along and, and just be one with this prayer. And I'm believing that it will be a supernatural thing that's going to happen right from this podcast, right from the blaze, right into your heart, right into your mind. Yes, Lord. Peace be still. Back in the shmoop in the shop like Hentin, Shopola had the bath, the lesser of hoofs, the end the hat, Shopola had the hoosh and mana, and then hoof that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God because He's with me everywhere I go. Holy Spirit, God in me, the hope of this world, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. Prayer and fasting. I'm going to admit. This is not something that I say, oh, man, this is great. I'm going to abstain from food or abstain from meat or do um, 12 hours without eating and and, and all kind of ways to fast. It's a Daniel fast where you just eat fruits and vegetables, drink water, no meats, no dairy, no junk food, which is a great thing to your body, for your body, right? No uh, cakes and none of that stuff, no meat. And it's a debate whether or not fish is meat or not. <laughs> but I tend to go to the fish route and um, eat fish. But this year, God is telling me to do something different. And uh, I won't release it right now, what I'm going to do until it's being done. Amen. I don't want to say something and then God, um, I don't have it truly confirmed with God yet. Amen. But what's truly confirmed with God is his word. It's always confirmed. Amen. His word is always confirmed. Now, if you look in the book of Matthew, and this is Jesus speaking, and it's Matthew chapter 6, the same chapter where you see the prayer, the Our Father prayer, the same place where God is speaking, where Jesus is speaking about um, being charitable, uh, you know, and when you pray, how to pray, the same chapter, he also speaks about fasting. Amen. So let's pick it up from Matthew chapter 6. And then verse 2, therefore, this is Jesus, our Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior speaking. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets as they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, I say to you, they have their reward. You know, Jesus is saying, if you want to be noticed by people, just be noticed by people. They say, you know, you're going around giving out things, um, doing good deeds, which is all good. But then you're going to say, hey, you see that um, that car that that family got? And then people say, yeah, I see that car. It's a nice car. Yeah, I gave it to them. You see that? You see what I mean? How that how you just want to be known for doing something. And then you're going to, you know, label Christianity or label your church on it and say, yeah, I did it for the church. I did it for Jesus. I did it for God. Amen. Jesus says, don't do that. Hypocrites do that. Verse 3, but when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Some people say that means, you know, don't go around telling everybody, don't tell your wife, your husband, your family members what you did. Some some people say that it's for those people that you have given to, that if you were found out given to those people, they might be, you know, in the trap, they might be prostitutes, they might be in the hood, they might be, you know, drug addicts. 
Some people say that this means don't let anybody know what you're doing for them. Because God sees what you're doing in a secret. And he will reward you publicly. He, God, will reward you publicly. Verse 4. That your charitable deed may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Reward you publicly. Amen. And when you pray. This is Jesus speaking. You shall not be like the hypocrites. Again, hypocrites um, could be translated as play actors, people who know how to play the part. You ever met somebody who knows how to speak church and play church? But in reality, in their lifestyle, it's totally opposite of that service that you've seen them in. Totally opposite of a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Sunday that you see them at church. And those are hypocrites. And play acting. I think that's bad business right there. If you go around saying you're a Christian or Christ follower and then you're, you know, dropping it like it's hot in the club on Saturday night, and then you show up, you know, a little bit tipsy or whatever to church on Sunday. You know what? That's you. It's all good. But repent. You know what I mean? It's not like you can't come to church high on drugs. You can't come to church drunk. I've seen that plenty of times. I've never done it personally. But I've seen it, and I've seen God move in those people. I've seen God move in their hearts. I've seen them repenting and turning away from that and being delivered from those curses over their life. So Jesus said, when you pray, you shall be, not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets. You ever seen those preachers and those people out there just yelling, screaming on the corners of the street, wanting to be known, wanting to be loud? Jesus said, uh-uh, not, not, don't do that. And they may be seen by men. And surely I say to you, they have their reward. Verse 6, but you, hallelujah, but you, brother and sister in the Lord, but you, disciple of Jesus, but you, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in a secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. He says it again, publicly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. I'm just going to stop right there for a moment. If you can recognize the repetition of certain Christian sects, S-E-C-T-S, sections of Christianity that really tell people to repeat over and over again the same prayers, they are actually going against what God said to do, what Jesus says here. He says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. And as a matter of fact, Jesus is calling you and those people heathens. It's not me speaking. It's the Lord Jesus speaking through his word because Jesus is the living word of God. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. So, you know, I sometimes when I'm in a circle of believers, of Christians, of confessing Christians, and I say, okay, who wants to pray? You know what a deer looks like in the headlights? That's what people look like sometimes when I ask who's going to pray. Because people think that you have to have a certain like vocabulary or a certain tone in your voice to pray to God. Or maybe you have to know scriptures and all that stuff. And they get so intimidated when it's their time to pray or when they're being asked to pray in a crowd. But I'm telling you right now, that's not the truth. Eloquent words and vocabulary, big words and, you know, Putting scriptures in there. Putting scriptures in your prayer is powerful if you have them in your memory. But God also says in another part of the scripture, don't be, don't worry about what you're going to say. Because he'll fill you with the words to say. Amen. So please, next time if you're in a Christian circle and somebody asks you to pray and you're that person that says, you know, I don't know how to pray. Amen. Just open your mouth and start speaking to God. Amen. Speak to him as it, as if he's your best friend because he is. Speak to him as if he's your father because he is. Speak to him as if he's your healer because he is. Speak to him as he is your deliverer because he is. You get it? Speak to Jesus. Speak to God the way you would speak to a person that without him, you can't do nothing. But with him, you could do all things. Speak to him. Amen. God wants to hear from you. Therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask of him. So people say, well, if Jesus already knows what I have need of, why should I ask him? Because he wants to hear from you. 
every individual voice. God wants to hear from you. And when he's pleased to answer your prayer, amen, it's cool. People come up to me and say, hey, brother, can you pray for me? Can you pray for my daughter? Can you pray for me, my son, um, my family, my situation, my families? Praise the Lord. I'll pray. But you know, it's more powerful, amen, to pray for your own self and your own needs and your own situations because God wants to hear from you, your voice, amen? It's good to be in proxy or to stand in the gap for people, amen? We're, we're directed to do that in the scriptures as well, stand in the gap, amen? The elders of the church should be approached if somebody's sick in the church, go to the elders, they will lay hands on you and they will pray and you shall recover, you shall be healed, amen? That's the word of God as well. But I'm saying God wants to hear from you. You're the perfect, authentic you. God created you wonderfully, fearfully. You are made with power. You are made with authority. You are made with a purpose. Jesus wants to hear from you. So then, therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. And then Jesus prays this prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. Stop right there. Where? It says on earth. That means is kingdom business is on earth? Yes. Heaven on earth? Yes. On earth as it is in heaven. This is the Lord Jesus, the living word of God praying this. Give us this day our daily bread. And that's everything. Everything you need is right there. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So listen, don't walk with unforgiveness. That's like spiritual cancer. That's that's cancer to your soul. And that will take you to another place. And it won't be a good place. Forgive. Even if the person doesn't want to forgive you, you forgive them. Amen? Free yourself from that prison. Free yourself from unforgiveness right now in the name of Jesus and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation. You know, God doesn't lead us into temptation. He tests us, T-E-S-T-S. He will test us, but he will not lead us into temptation. God doesn't tempt, nor does he. God cannot be tempted, nor will he tempt us. Amen. That's the job that of the flesh the world, and the devil. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And the evil one is during this 21-day fast, if you choose um, to join us and to be delivered and healed and taken to a next level, if you want God in your life to be a reality, not just a, a myth or something you know you have on the side, join us. The enemy, that's why we have to stick together during this 21-day fast. The enemy is going, to, is going to be attacking. Amen? And, you know, there's always two things. I read a book years ago by Jensen Franklin about fasting. He says, it's a war, it's a battle between King Jesus and King Stomach. Because the flesh is not just like, don't like the spirit. It's not just like the flesh is like, you know, I want to do my own thing. And yeah, I'll let God do his thing every once in a while. No, the Bible says... The flesh and the spirit are at war. This is wartime. But guess what? You ever been in a fight that you know you're going to win? Amen? It could be not, uh, not only a physical fight. It could be a fight against addiction, a fight against illness, a fight against relational issues, a fight against desires that are not good. But when you know you're on a winning team... You just get amped up and you'd be like, man, I got this. God is in me. I could do this. He says I can. I will. And that's it. It's time to really get into this. You know, being a Christian, I know the world says, you know, it's corny. It's not cool. It's not real. Whatever. Blah, 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 blah. But the first people they come to are Christ followers. People they know that are changed, different, that are filled with the Holy Spirit God, whether or not they know Holy Spirit God or not. They know who to turn to because the people that are outside in the world doing partying, smoking, drinking, sex, drugs, all that, violence, everything that goes with it, I did that all too. They know that it has to be a difference in somebody who's calling themselves Christians, Christ followers, believers, born again. They know there has to be, they know there has to be a difference. So we should be the difference. 
We should look different, amen, than what the world is doing. You could be among people because we're always going to be among people who don't serve God. But just because you're among them doesn't mean that you have to be influenced by them, but you can influence them with kingdom principles, with your lifestyle, a lifestyle of worship, a lifestyle of praise, a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Amen. But deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to say that again. Jesus says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This world is not looking for uh, another church. This world is not looking for another popular preacher or popular evangelist or popular apostle or teacher. This world is not looking for that or a prophet. The world is not looking for that. The world is looking for God. Through these people, yes, but God nonetheless. You know, the hood don't need another church. There's churches all over the hoods of, you know, all over where you can see in the neighborhoods. There's churches everywhere. I, I dare to say there's more churches than Chinese restaurants. Amen. But who needs a church service where it's just religion? These people, and I was one of them, I was looking for a church or preacher or pastor. I was looking for God, man. I was looking for God. And if there was really a God, he had to change me. That was my test. That was my, let's see if this is real or not. It was all about if he could change me. And for all those excuses, a lot of my friends and people that I know have all these excuses why they don't believe in God and why they think it's all phony and fake. It's about control and this, that, and the third. When you run out of excuses, and you will during this 21-day fast, if you're connected to me, you're going to run out of excuses because that's one of my prayers, that you will run dry out of excuses and then do it. Test God at his word over your life and then come back to me and let me know if he's real or not. But during this 21 days, as your excuses dry out, I'm praying that the river, the ever-flowing, overflowing river of life, just wells up in you and you'll just start speaking things of God and you ask him to change you. Like I asked him so many years ago to change me. You know, it would have been so easy for me to walk away and be like, you know, there is no God. So I'm gonna keep on doing what I do and living the way I was living. But when he changed me, I had a big problem now. <clears throat> problem was he changed me. <laughs> so now what? Either he's real or I'm crazy. And yeah, I'm a little crazy. But he's real. Amen. He's real. He changed my life and he will change your life during this 21 day prayer and fast. Verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. That's good news, right? But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That's bad news. You see, you can't have just good news. I know a lot of preachers. A lot of people that serve God want to just talk about the good stuff. You know, that's that's unfair. That's unfair for somebody who's seeking for God. That's unfair for somebody who's struggling in their faith. That's unfair. You're just saying the good part. Jesus says the good and the bad. So I'm going to follow what Jesus does, how he preached, how he taught, how he witnessed, how he evangelized, how he prayed, how he fasted. I'm going to just follow him, if you don't mind. I rather follow Jesus. Amen. And I have good examples around me, men of God around me, women of God around me that are great examples. But no offense, I rather go to the source. Really don't need no middlemen in this thing. Uh, I rather go to the source. And everyone that's connected to me that wants me to excel in ministry and, you know, in the faith, they want me to know my true calling. Amen. They want me to just have faith and move forward in what God has for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for these people. Amen. And I'm not going to take that away from them. And I'm going to bless them in the name of Jesus right now. Jesus says what he says. I believe what Jesus says. And he works through people, obviously. But his word is the one main point of reference that I will return to if I need to know his word. His word. Amen. So everything else is really like a bonus. His word is true, whether I believe it or not, whether you believe it or not. So during this 21 day fast, another prayer. Amen. I shouldn't even be sharing this, right? But I am because God is telling me to share it because he wants to be glorified 
when these prayers come to pass. I'm praying that all your excuses will run out. And number two, that you stop listening to all those people that are telling you that God is not real. Okay? Okay. So, but if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, and this is the point. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Moreover. In other words, after I said all of that, moreover. When you fast, so we're expected to fast. Jesus expects us to fast. When you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces. <laughs> you know, I get cranky, of course, after two or three days out without eating or whatever. However, I do this fast, get a little cranky. The body starts saying, hey, what's up? You're taking me out of my own routine. But these hypocrites, they put a sad countenance on their face, for they disfigure their faces, Jesus says, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. So you go around saying, yeah, man, I'm fasting. Well, there's there's your reward. I'm not here to short circuit my blessing or short circuit your blessing. Let's keep this, let's keep this between us and God, right? <laughs> he knows we're fasting. And, you know, if we get cranky, God, God, God knows what's going to happen. God knows what happens to the flesh and to the body when we start this fasting because it's something different. It changes things. It changes us. It changes our perspective. It gets us closer to God, I tell you that much. Because after you stop eating for a certain amount of days, you'd be like, well, it's just me and God now. There's no food. It takes away a lot of distractions. Amen. Um, you might experience this. You might experience that. But if you do this fast with a heart to serve God, with a heart to see bondages and chains broken, with a heart to see the prisoners set free, with a heart to see everybody who's hungry fed, with a heart of Jesus, the heart of God, a heart of compassion, a heart of charity, right? If you, if you approach God with this fast that way, you're going to see tremendous moves and elevation and acceleration in your life. You're also going to get clear vision for the year 2020. So moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, listen to this and do it. Jesus said to do it. I'm going to do it. You do it. And don't be afraid. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in a secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So during this fast, you're not going to get robbed. The enemy is not going to be able to touch anything that God has given you. Unless he's allowed to. Unless he has the permission from God to touch your things. Like in the book of Job. If you don't believe me that God has to go to God. Um, excuse me. That the enemy, the devil has to go to God. Right? The God of this world has to go to the God of all everything for permission. In that order. And not any other order. Amen. So this 21 day prayer and fasting is the preparation. Amen. Um, the, however the Lord leads you, pray to God. And however he leads you during this 21 days of prayer and fasting, how he wants you to do it, he will be specific. If you want to do it with other people, so that way you could be held accountable or, you know, you could get help when you feel weak for people who have done it before. I've done this for years. And if you want to reach out to me and you say, man, um, I don't know, but I feel this way and that way. Um, if you want to consult your physician, do it. But if you're going in this fast um, just for a diet plan and to lose weight or something like that, then yeah, go see your physician. But if you're doing it um, unctioned by Holy Spirit God and he's directing you, he's not going to let you, you're not going to die. He's not going to let you, you know, get all sick and everything and, and pass out. And you might pass out maybe, but you'll be okay. 
if you're doing it for what God wants you to do it for. Amen. But if you're doing it just to be in a routine or to be a part of something that you know you're not, you know, filled with Holy Spirit God, amen, then you might want to go check up with your physician and do those type of things. Amen. But either way, during this 21 day fast, I'll be praying for you. And I pray that you'll be praying for us and for me and my family as I pray for you and your family and your ministry and your heart's desire. I'm praying that God will fill them and accelerate all those promises and all those prayers that you've prayed that you thought went unnoticed. I pray acceleration this 21 days in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God is good. Peace.